Welcome back to the channel folks, Keith here from Commander Hoop Celtic. This is your first time coming across the channel. If you could press the subscribe button, even a thumbs up or comment below would be really appreciated. This video won't be too long, it's going to be about average 5 minutes talking about 3 players that we're linked with from the J League and the Motherwell game tomorrow who I think should play. So let's kick it off, Days and Mayday that we've been linked with, 24 year old J Japanese striker, 26 goals last season in 26 games. He picked up the golden boot in the J League and there's reports that he's on his way out and he's going to sign for Celtic in the next 14 days. Now I did say this last week on the channel but Yokohama are a step closer signing his replacement so it looks like he's getting a little bit closer and he must be doing the work in the background to get this lad over the line. We need we need strikers. We're calling out for strikers. Koyogo's injured. Jack Amas is, is injured. Yeti's injured. Jota is injured even though he plays left wing regards to the other guy that we've been linked with Rio Hate now his contract is up at the end of January there's been reports in Japan that Fontale are looking for a fee for this guy they're not, like, not going to let him go easy enough he wants to play in Europe his preferred position is left back but even though he can play midfield and he can play up front he's played for the Japanese university team he represents Japan as well in the Olympics so the reports that we're looking at is 2.3 million that they want for this guy. Get him. Get him. He's 23 years of age. He's young. He's versatile. He's pacey. He's, and he can play in most of these positions that I've talked about. Not a bother to him. He played left wing back most of last season in the J League. And he, he, he ended up winning a league medal as well. So let's see what happens with this guy. Now the reports that are coming out. I've seen this for the last two days. And I've read more into it. Yosuke Inaguchi. I do apologise. There is people that has correct me. Yosuke Inaguchi. That played for Leeds United four years ago. He's on the verge to sign for Celtic. Where partly the fee is. 850 grand. That we agreed with. Gambia Osaka. In the J League. Now Gambia Osaka finished 13th. Last season. This guy is a box to box midfielder. I watch his. His most iconic goal for Japan back in 2018 against Australia. He likes cut, cutting in from the left and smashing it. But this is the type of player we need. We need playmakers for the future. So hopefully we can get this guy over the line. If it's less than a million quid, happy days. He's 25 years of age. He played 24 games last season as well. And he's a physical player as well. So that's what I'm missing. We have a box-to-box -box midfielder like Callum McGregor. But we need more in there David Turnbull you can't really say he's a box to box midfielder so we get another midfielder in that position start clearing out dead wood I hope he yet he goes with his injury that might stall a long move or a fee Barkas I've talked about on the channel there's three Turkish clubs looking at him that hasn't anything from developed from that and then I can see the likes of Bon Goli going depends who wants to buy him you know if we're going to take the cut and sell him for 2.3 million Happy days. He might go to Belgium. He might go to France. He might go to the second division of France. You know, um, someone said today, I read a couple of articles that Tony Watt is on his way on Motherwell at the end of the season. The, the deal broke down. Now, we're playing Motherwell tomorrow. Would I take Tony Watt back at Celtic? I wouldn't, to be honest with you. I know as much as I said yesterday, I'd take Paddy Roberts back. But Tony Watt, he just lives in that ego that Barcelona go. I just, I look at the amount of clubs he's been to, worse than Paddy Roberts. So um, I wouldn't take Tony Watt back at Celtic, unfortunately. I just think he's he lived on that ego. The ship has sailed with him. What a well tomorrow. Three o'clock kickoff. Their fourth place in the league. Last time we played, we beat them 2 0 away. And it was goals from David Turnbull that used to play for them, the former captain for them, and Jota. Now Jota's out, Coyogo's out, Yeti's out. James is touch and go, you know, um, Julian's still out, so the stretcher list is getting bigger and bigger, so um, who, who I play tomorrow is, Joe Hart comes back into Nets, he didn't play the other night against Betis, right back, I'll go for Jovanovic, look at, Olegiri was outstanding, Rolson's still injured, there was talks that he could be fit for this game, we'll have to see, Left back would have to be Liam Scales. I thought Liam Scales over the last two games coming into the team has been fantastic. He's going to pick Greg Taylor because he, he favours Greg Taylor for experience. But Scales deserves the nod over Taylor. Hard work he's put in, he deserves it. And plus he has the goal as well. 
and he's was solid the other night. Defensive, the defensive two have to be Starfeld and Vickers. Look, a Welchy scored a header the other night. I feel more comfortable with Starfeld and Vickers. You can bring Welch on if something goes wrong. He's good. He's a good sub to have. Defensive midfielder has to be near Beaton. Look, a near Beaton played defensive midfield the other night or centre back the other night, and he done a good job as a captain as centre back position with Welchy. But I, I put more up a little bit, holding the defensive midfield. Callum McGregor in there with David Turnbull. Rodgers could be in, could be in action. But um, regards to I play David Turnbull against his former club. Look at the goal he scored against them at Fair Park. Absolute cracker of a goal. And Callum in there as well, just being box to box. Right wing has to be a bad it. Left wing would have to be Mikey Johnson as much as I don't rate Mikey Johnson. And I just have a feeling. I just have this feeling. That we're going to see Al Moffat playing up front for tomorrow. Al Moffat has been outstanding for the B team. He had a couple of games as well for the senior team over the summer. So he's been called up for the squad. My predictions for the game tomorrow. We have another silent protest from the Green Brigade and other organisations. A lot of fans are angry about it because it's a massive, massive game. We want the fans behind the team singing out. You've seen the other night. It was depressing as hell. Not much atmosphere me watching the telly just couldn't enjoy the game even though there was goals from the 60 minute onwards there was end to end goals but I just hope something sorts in with this Bernard Higgins stuff it's just dragging on it's we don't need Celtic fans arguing with each other at the end of the day we're one family you know I think we should be back in the team this is a crucial crucial season and stuff like this where you're not singing to back the team when we're going for the title that we can get Champions League qualification automatic champions equal it could hit us in the face you know this could jeopardize the result and i know it's we're looking at the guys in the pitch but it's all about the motivation levels and we need them guys in the corner singing we need the fans singing we need everyone singing especially going into a game like this we should be beating with a well i fancy two nil against them i really do fancy i think it's going to be a nil all game at half time you know, it's, they're going to come trying to park the bus. They're doing outstanding this season. Who would have thought it would have been in fourth place? But um, I fancy 2-0. I'm going to fancy Owen Moffat getting a goal. And I fancy Lee Alabada tomorrow actually stepping up to the plate and getting a goal. It's going to be a good midfield battle. I don't think Tony Watt will score against us tomorrow. I just think, as I said, I wouldn't take Tony Watt back at Celtic. Not a chance. But um, there is a chance that you could recall Lee Griffiths back. It depends on how long yet he's out and Jack Marcus is out. And if you don't strengthen in January, they might call Lee back. Preferably, I don't want Lee back at the club. I think Lee Griffiths has moved on. I think the whole Lee Griffiths saga, I think it's time that we get away from Lee. I wish him the very best. I just don't think he's fit, ready enough to do the Celtic stuff again. And um, look at over 100 goals. You can't fault that. But at the same time, we need to move forward. And we, we don't need, I would call him Deadwood at the moment. Because he's not, he's not scoring for Dundee. So I was expecting to go up there, get a bit of game time, banging a few goals, and it hasn't really worked out so far. So um, let me know what you think about the game. Let me know what you think of the transfer rumours. And would you take Tony Watt back? Would you take Lee Griffiths back and recall him back from his loan mouth? Let me know. Take care. Hell, hell.